Mine's in, in Psalms chapter 108, verse 12 and 13. It says, uh, Give help, O Lord, from trouble, for vain is the help of man. For through God we shall do valiantly. It is He, for He it is, that will tread down our enemies. He's going to walk the old devil down away from us. Woo! Victory. Now, Ben's, my wife is here this evening, and we've got a lot of young people that don't know all the days of uh, Isaac. I'm going to ask her to give them a little introduction to the numbers. She knows because I was, uh, I was talking about them last week. And if you'd like to, oh, it won't work. <laughs> we was going from Abraham to Isaac and when his children was born and when his, how old he was and how old the kids was. <laughs> and does anybody know how old Isaac was when he died? We'll, we'll close with that. That's, that's close. You're just five years too much. Yeah. That, that's, that's in the, I think you just need the scripture that the Lord uh, marked the, those things down for a point of, you know, just where you kind of have a point of contact in them. Our, our lesson today is over Jacob's faith. Is there anything about Jacob that you remember that, that showed his faith in God? Daniel, do you remember anything about Jacob? Do you know who he was? Never heard of Jacob before? You have heard of Jacob? Okay. Some of the young people help us. Who, who, was, uh, who, who was Jacob? How come he's meaningful to us? When the Lord talked to Moses, who did he say that I am the God of? I'm the God of Abraham. Jacob. I'm the God of Isaac. And I'm the God of Jacob. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes. And so th this whole chapter in Hebrews chapter 11 is about faith. And it's how God stirred up faith in people and different people. There's, there's lots of names called here. And then it goes on to a lot of people that are unnamed. And he says that through faith, all of those had a good report. And that's our belief system. Now, it starts out with, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. But it goes on down there to say, without faith, what? It is impossible, it is impossible to please God. Um, we also looked at Isaac's faith last week, and his faith was uh, a little bit on the side whenever he was going to uh, anoint or give the blessing to Esau. And for several years... Do you remember the amount of years, Mama? <laughs> For several years, he had... Frederick Ross helped me out. What was he telling For several years, about 40, he had knew about the promise that God had given when those children were going to be born. And in that promise that there was twins in the womb, that they would both be boys, he said that the younger would rule the elder. But when it comes down to blessing them, who does Isaac want to bless and intends to bless? Esau. He intends to bless the wrong one. He just feels like, you know, I'm at, at the age I am and at the age this child is, I can just, uh, I can probably manhandle this deal and give it to the one I want to have it. But with the intercession of Mama and Jacob and uh, some, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some pretty, from some pretty tough decisions made, uh, they intervened. You know what? God could have got it done without them. Yeah. I, I've got to believe that with all my heart. But they was afraid. Rebecca was afraid that he was her. The one that she loved the most wasn't going to get the blessing like God had promised. So she intervened. 
for God. And the Lord looked over the whole deal, and even Isaac in a little bit comes around and says, I've blessed him, and he shall be blessed. What caught me about that particular lesson was that faith, even uh, whenever he was uh, against the Lord, his faith still rose up over that and says, you know, I'm, I've got to let it go because God said it. And, you know, it was a small thing. There wasn't nobody there. There wasn't a group of people or nothing. There was just him and his two sons and his wife. But he looked out past all of that to what God had said and said, the blessing has got to go to Jacob. because, I, And he tells Esau, Esau's crying out, Father, bless me. He said, he's already undermined me these two times. Bless me. And he said, I've already blessed him and he shall be blessed. So that set the tone of what God intended to do with Jacob and the prophecy that was 40 years old came to pass. The blessing did go upon the younger son, Jacob. We, now, yes. Can I just ask a question? Sure. Yeah, we're about fine. This. We were reading it and, uh, you know, she... She was the one that got uh, the uh, word from God that the uh, young young child, which was Jacob, was going to yes. get the blessing. So she already knew that, you know, I mean, would, you, would that make it her favorite? I mean, well, I think what we were talking about that yeah. was a question is if in, okay, uh, Jacob was... I mean, Isaac was blind. He couldn't see that it was or wasn't Isaac. I'm sorry. Was he saw. <clears throat> so, in his mind, he gave the blessing to Esau. Even though they were deceiving him and they were pulling the wool over his blind eyes, so to speak, how did he still, how did Jacob still receive the blessing when he wasn't named? And in, 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 uh, Isaac's mind, he, it, what, there was no knowledge that it was him. Yes. I mean, I know God is sovereign over everything. Yes. But it, how does him speaking that blessing over Jacob when he thought it was Esau still make it come to pass? Okay. The, that, that's a good question, and we'll go back and answer it. Let, let's, let's go back over that right quick and, and look at it for just a minute in, in the book of Genesis and uh, about uh, verse number... 20, chapter 11 and verse number 20 of, of Genesis. The question is, if he thought he was blessing Esau, and he did, the Bible says that he never figured out that it was Jacob. He smelt of him. He rubbed his hands. He caught a hold of the back of his neck. He smelt his clothes. He ate his food. And he said, You're him. This is Esau. And so he, as far as, as far as he could get it out, it, he had blessed Esau. Okay, um, let, put, put it up there. I think it's... Uh, I think that's it. It's, are you looking for where the blessing where he told the mama? Yeah. Uh, Genesis 25 and 23. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I was looking at, at, at our lesson out of Hebrews. Yeah, chapter 11, verse number 21. Okay, 25 and 23 of, of Genesis... <clears throat> Okay, go to the next chapter. <clears throat> this is where she was told of, about the prophecy that the, that the children they were struggling in her breath in her uh, mm -hmm. stomach. Yes, go, go go to chapter twenty six and let's look at it because I think it's right here's where it starts talking about. Uh, okay, go to twenty seven. <clears throat> okay, right here. Uh, he calls his eldest son in. Skip down to about uh, about five verses. Another one. Okay, eight, nine, ten. We're getting there. Eleven, twelve, fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're still getting closer. Put it on down to about, uh, yeah, about 18. 
And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, said, and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it thou hast found it so quickly? Speaking of the deer he was supposed to kill. My son, and he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it me. Boy, he's a slick booger, ain't he? And Isaac said unto, unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Don't you know there was a fear went down Jacob's? Because he, he thought, man, if, my, if he finds out I am deceiving him, he'll probably put a curse on me instead of a blessing. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. So uh, up until now, like like uh, being said, nothing. He, he don't he don't catch it. He thinks that he still and he thinks I'm beating God. I'm putting the blessing where it's not supposed to go. It's supposed to go on Jacob. I'm putting it on Esau. And he said, "Are thou my very son, Esau?" And he said, "I am." <laughs> Whoa. And he being, and he said, bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venture, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Do you know what he was eating, Daniel? Thomas, do you know what he was eating? What was it? What was he really eating? What was he really eating? He thought he was eating Vincent. What was he really eating? Tyler, do you know what he was eating? Yeah, he was eating goat meat. Eating goat. They'd killed a kid goat and deceived their dad with goat meat. So he didn't know he didn't know if he was eating Vincent or goat. He thought it was eating Vincent. <laughs> he, yeah, if you, well, she must have fixed it somehow because he didn't discern it. <laughs> he said, I hear you. I've eaten some gold in just one bite. And be like, whoa, man. <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> Sometimes it's tough, ain't it? Oh, okay, here we go. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fattest of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. <clears throat> Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Exactly opposite of what the Lord said in, the, in that prophecy in 25. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee. And blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father. Now what kind of meat was he bringing in? He was bringing venison, deer meat. And he brought it to his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken the Vincent? See, he thought he was eating deer. It's taken the Vincent. He's eating goat meat. And brought it unto me, and I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, here, here's the crossover right here. He recognizes at this time, that God had this thing set up from the beginning 40 years ago when they was born and now God's speaking to him right here and saying and, he, and, and this is where his faith went from against God to okay Lord even in the face of the tears and my, and my son the one I love most him crying out to me and begging if you go to Hebrews like it's uh, him, it or maybe maybe twelve. We will look at this a minute. That he saw Esau saw it carefully with tears, but found no place of repentance. He really didn't care about God. Esau did not care about God. He gave his birth right away, which was a God given thing for just a bowl of beans or something. 
And, but here, here's where Isaac crosses over, before thou camest, and I have blessed him, and yea, he shall be blessed. Those words right there is what set the blessing over on Jacob. I blessed the wrong one in my mind, but he shall be blessed. And that, that answers how come he got the blessing is because God seen to it that the prophecy was going to be fulfilled. Yeah. And like I said, God has the last say, but actually Isaac blessed the wrong guy, but he was blessing the one that God said he'd bless. Woo! So what, what, what story do we learn from this? Don't, don't try to be God. He's got, the, he got the last say every time. And if we're willing to do it God's way, it's always the best way. He, he knows best. And I mean, it cost, uh, Jacob almost cost him his life, but he, he kind of bought Esau off with the present he gave to him. And he was very humble. When he come back, he said, I, I don't want to, I don't need nothing you've got, Esau. I want to give you a blessing. I want to say thank you for not sicking your men on me. I think he had 400 men with him. Anyway, that's, uh, that's how he got by right there. Answer the question okay out of the scripture? Yes, I mean, I knew, I guess you knew. God is going to have the final say, and and uh, it's just it just seems like such a wreck. Yeah. The whole thing because I, we will also talk about the fact that maybe there was a slight bit of Rebecca that did know what God said. I know that Jacob was his, her favorite. Yes. But um, surely there was something in her that was like, like you said, she heard her husband say that, and was like, but God. But God said it was going to be Jacob, and Jacob's my favorite. Yes. This happened. Yes. She did know that. She knew what the Lord had spoke to her, uh, absolutely. And Jacob knew that. He, grew, I mean, that wasn't something hid from him. It, it, the Scripture doesn't say a lot about that, but them, them being right there together, and she had went to pray to find out what God would say about it. And I'm, I'm sure that would be something you would share with your mate. I mean, that's before the children were even born. But anyway... Uh, good, good question, and it and it makes you want to dig around and say just how how it come out. The, yeah, I mean it. What's, what's very amazing that the Lord looks at this and, and looks at Isaac's faith. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he never received the Canaan land like, like the promise was, but he just knows that what God said to Abraham and, I, and Isaac, him, was going to come to pass one of these days. And uh, so he's just, he's just uh, believing, and he, he stepped over. Uh, even the fact that he loved uh, Esau more, then he loved Jacob. He stepped over that and said, whatever, is, I'm still, I'm still going to give it over. Know, yes. Okay. Uh, if Isaac had have known that it was Jacob, I'm sure he would have not given that kind of a blessing. If he'd said, okay, I need to bless this boy because I know what the prophecy says. Knowing that his favorite's outside the door, I think he would have kind of held back a little bit. Okay, you're going to be blessed so a little bit, but I'm saving the, I'm saving some for Esau. But since he didn't know that, I mean, he just, he just lavished him. Lavished him. That's and it. He would have never done that if he had known that was Jacob. But God absolutely put the words in his yes. mouth. You're going to be blessed when you go out in and everybody's going to serve you. And, and your, all your mother's kids are going to bow down to you. <laughs> he was, Whoa! He would have never said no. that. The Bible says absolutely that Esau did not care anything about God. But did Jacob really much then either? Well, see, Jacob wanted the birthright. That's a God-given birthright. Mm -hmm. Jacob wanted the blessing from the Father so because, he because he believed in, in that blessing that come from Abraham to Isaac that he could be a, he wanted to be a carrier of that yes yeah and, and, and also if you notice whenever Rebecca is talking to Jacob to go do this he said uh uh I'm scared uh, he put a curse on me said I will never outlive it and she said let his curse be on me you go do this. This is we got. This has got to be done. <laughs> so she she coached him into going getting a kid goat, and they killed it instead of the and, 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 and made it up right quick and got it in there, and got the blessing. Yeah. So, boy, that was a, uh, and you know. For, for if you don't know very much about scripture, you would think that because he's on his dying bed, 
That, that, that's what caught me also about the story. He was about a hundred years old when this happened. Isaac was. And he lived to be, like Terry said, 280. No, 180. I'm sorry. Yeah, he lived to be. Thank you, Mom. Help me. He lived to be 100. <laughs> he lived to be 180 years old. So he lives 80 years after this and gets to see, I think, I, I figured it up, but it's like about 35 years of his life, he got to know um, the children. Yeah. Of, of uh, Jacob and of Esau too. In fact, Esau and Jacob buried him together. So you can see the family coming back back together to some some extent there. But you look you look back through the ether waves of history as we have it here in the scriptures, and he, here here's a clincher as to why the Lord said no on Esau. He knew what Esau how he was going to live. He, he sold his birthright for nothing, and he wanted that blessing of course, but he didn't want to live for God in the in the process. Jacob he was a rounder, but he he come to the Lord. He he, he did he come back to God and stayed faithful to the Lord. Don't you think though in, in a way too that shows. That shows us to even today that, yeah, Jacob was crooked, but God turned him around and used him. Yes. And, and gives hope for, because you, you hear people say all the time, well, I've been so poor. What can God do with me? You know what I mean? And here comes the Lord. So there you go back and you look and, and you get hope from a guy that's yes. crooked, deceives his, his dad, and, and cheats his brother, and then God uses him. And then God uses him, yes, and raises up out of him. There's three patriarchs, but now we've got 12, I mean, that come out of Jacob. And, man, that, that, that's powerful. Here's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse I think it's like verse 15. This, this kind of gives us a, a bird's eye view right into the heart of Esau and why God rejected him. He says here, look in diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator. If you look at that last chapter, I think it's the last chapter, uh, I want to say it's like 28, I don't remember now, those numbers are kind of swirling around in my head. But uh, just before Isaac blessed them, it said that Esau married two Hittite women. And because of the history of Abraham, Abraham tells Isaac, what, what does he tell this oldest servant whenever he's trying to find a mate for Isaac? Don't let him marry anybody from this part of the country. And now this is my thinking. The Lord had told Abraham that he was going to give him all of that country. And to take a land, you've got to kill people to do that. And you'd be killing your kinfolks. And so the, the Lord puts it in Abraham's heart. Send him back to Padana Ram and, and let him get a wife from our people, from, from back where we came from. So there'll, there'll be no kin to the Hittites, the Amorites, the, all, all of those, no, no kin. So when they come down there, that, that, that will be an open, an open field for them to take. And uh, <clears throat> just to show how the Lord guards, uh, look, look how he guarded Moab from the children of Israel. He said, he said I, I don't want you to, to whip them because they are, they are kinfolk to you. They're Lot's offspring, Moab and Ammon. And so they didn't, they didn't take Moab when they come into Canaan. They didn't take Moab. Moab come over there and tried to, tried to get them, you know, later on. But anyway, uh, that, that's a, it's an interesting thing how the Lord dealt with that. And so whenever, whenever Esau, according to the scripture here, the Bible says, lest there be any fornicator. He, he took these, these Hittite women, uh, married them, and uh, his mom and dad's heart was broken. They, they, they just couldn't believe. And so they get Jacob up, hearing the words of, of Esau. Esau says, whenever I get him out, after, after dad dies and mom gets out of the way, I'm going to kill him. I'm sick of him. I'm going to kill him. I'm through with him. And whenever he came to meet him, he, he didn't come with 400 men for nothing. He come to, to meet him. He come to fix him. But the Lord dealt with Jacob and helped him, you know, get by the deal there. Very, very precious. But here he is. Lest there be any fornicator, profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, 
when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, and here's why. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He said he was sorry, but he had no godly sorrow. Yes. He was sorry he was caught. He was sorry he was wrong and didn't want to change. But he, he, he wasn't godly sorrow, because godly sorrow helps you to say, I'm wrong and I'm going to do something about it. I'm getting it out of here, away from me. And that's where he was not willing to go, and so it, it cost him. Uh, go, go back to that last ch chapter 28 and look down at the bottom. We'll just put that in, in writing here for everybody can sit just a minute. Uh, I think in Genesis 28 and, and the last verse there, or last two verses of it, of chapter 28. Did I miss it? Okay, it's going to be 26 then. I, I'm, I'm ahead of it instead of behind it. It's going to be 26 in the last verses, I bet you. Yeah. And Esau was 40 years old when he took a wife, two wife, Judith, the daughter of Berea, the Hittite, and Beshemath, the daughter of of Elon the Hittite. Is there one more scripture there? Which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So this spells out that he had, he had married out, out of the, the lineage that they wanted him to be. And they, they was afraid because of what he had done that, that Jacob would do the same thing. So they gathered him up and said, you need to go to Laban. That's what Rebekah says. Go to Laban, my brother. Your, your brother wants to kill you. Plus, we don't want you to start dating somebody here uh, that, that would take you down. And you know, the Lord still asks us when we marry to marry inside the church, not inside the lighthouse, but people that knows God. If, if you go marry somebody off the bar stool, your chances of survival spiritually are almost zero. It's not that it hasn't happened before that God somehow re redeemed, but it, the, it, that can cause so much wreckage. And so. Uh, I think Romans chapter 7 gives a little hint of it here. Uh, in Romans chapter 7, and uh, it's an early part of that chapter. He says, uh, verse number 3, this is talking about a, a woman that has lost her husband. So then... If while her husband liveth, she be married to another, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she shall be free to, from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another. Uh, he talks about us, then the next part he talks about us, that we're married in our relationship when we come to Christ. Verse number four talks about us that we're married into Christ, that he becomes, uh, we, we've left the world of sin and we've come into the righteousness of the Lord. So that, that's not the exactly... Be not there you go. Yes, First Corinthians chapter six. Yes, that's that's powerful. Be not unequally yoked together, with unbelievers. And that's not to say that somebody couldn't be one to the Lord and then you marry them. But I mean, that, that's a real careful thing to bring to bring somebody that has no care for God into a Christian atmosphere. You cannot make a man or woman serve the Lord. That, now, he, he does talk about it in 1 Corinthians 7. He says, how do you know, old wife, if you can't, you know, this, this is a, a, looks like a man and woman that got married uh, in sin. The woman gets saved, and, and the question is, ask her, don't leave the man. How do you know that what you might win him through your, through your good, your, your work, or, or the man? If, if, if you got saved and your wife didn't, how do you know you, you don't have a chance of bringing her into a walk with Christ? So that's... Yes. Um, I can't, I don't know this answer, so maybe you can help me. You know, when Jacob was really uh, what we would call saved or changed, and then the Lord gave him a new name. Yes. And he became Israel, the father of nations. Well, I do know that Esau's name was changed to Edom, 
but I don't know when. Was it after he married them girls? And then Eden became, uh, because it was, his name means red. Yes. Which it says he was born red. And the, so he, he never, it, to me it's saying, you never changed. Yeah. You, what you were born with, that's the way you stay. They, they said they, they called him Edom because he ate the red pottage. That, that's that's in, the, in the Bible somewhere. And it, it says in Genesis 25, he was, when he came yes, to it, 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 and Harry, yes, okay. yes. But, what it, I but he did call it Edom because the word Edom means red, yes. Trying to say to me that the country of Edom was never the, a chosen country. No. And that, no, that was Esau's name. offsprings, Jacob yes. Jacob was born with the name Jacob, which meant supplanter, but changed over to Israel. <laughs> so the change took place. He was happy for that change, but... Esau never changed. Yes. That, that, he just kept that same old Adamic wicked. That's character. the deal right there. Esau never changed. He didn't want to change. He wanted the blessing. Who don't? What sinner doesn't want the blessing of the Lord on them? But it, yeah. it can't go there. Yeah. No. Even though his name was changed, he never changed. He never changed, Jacob no. Jacob did. Yes. And I, th I think the, the reason it talks about him, his name being called Edom because of that red pottage was because he sold his birthright for it. And it showed, it, you know, it showed the distinction of how little he was willing to, to poof off his uh, godly, God-given promises. Okay, we're back in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 21. Any, any other questions about Isaac or, or then before we kick off, we're, we're headed into Jacob's life? All this shows the, the foreknowledge of God. He knew all this was going to happen. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.
What is it, baby? Romans 9.13. Romans chapter 9, verse number 13. Put it up there, baby, if you can. Romans 9.13. Okay, here it is, predestination. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And the reason in God knew everything about them, and he knew Esau was not going to repent. He sought it carefully with tears, but it wasn't in his heart. He cried because he didn't get what he wanted, but he didn't want to change to get it. And he goes off, I mean, he just belligerent. I mean, just lived by his sword nearly almost like uh, Ishmael. And then, in fact, they, they, they become part of that, yeah. Perspective on what you were asking about when Esau got his name changed. Obviously, uh, Jacob got his change right when he made the decision that he is going to live for God from then on. And kind of Esau made a decision when he sold his birthright mm -hmm. for that red potted, I'm not going to live for yeah. him anymore. So he got his new name and it mm -hmm. was Edom. That, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that. Yeah, it spoke to his. Yeah, he's known. When you think about Esau, you think about his willingness to sell God out. Mm -hmm. And, and look at us. What would we sell the Lord out for? What have we sold him out for? And, and most of the time it's the little fox that spoils the vine. It's, it's, not, it's not some big deal. It's the, it's the little bitty stuff that we just clip and say, well, I'm just going to, I ain't going to follow him. What's out there that's worth doing that? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Verse number 21 of Hebrews chapter uh, 21. By faith, out of all the things, that, uh, and I, I love that the cross in Penuel where he finally becomes Israel. That was a powerful time in Jacob's life. Laban's behind him and uh, Esau's in front of him and he's in a pinch. I mean, he's got death both sides. And plus he's got, now he's got all those children and all of the, all this wealth and all that's going to be scoped up just like that. And he just gets down before God. He sends everybody off and he stays on the other side of Penuel by himself. And there he meets the angel, gets a hold of him. I liken to that for us getting a hold of God because it was, and, and you know the angel tells him, he says, he, says, he tried to shake him off but he, I mean he's hanging on for, he said I ain't, you can kill me but I ain't leaving I mean he, he smote him to where he, he limped the rest of his life he dried up the sinew in his hip uh, but, but he wouldn't turn him loose he's, he's limping like crazy but he still got a hold of him that, that's what God wanted to see in Esau's life, but he wouldn't. He, that wasn't there. He didn't have no hang on to God. It was all about him. And but Jacob so radically changed. I mean, it said when he crossed the that, that river Penuel, that the sun, the S U N rose upon him, but the S O N rose upon him too. And his, he was never called Jacob no more. He's called Israel uh, in the eyes of God, the father of many nations. Woo! Precious that conversion. That's not recorded right here in Hebrews, though. What he is saying, he's talking about this man. He's, he's been through all kinds of trouble, and he gets down to his closing hours. And you know what a man says at death speaks volumes about his life because he's trying to put into action. Uh, I mean, if you knew you had three minutes to live, what would you say? Would you say, go get all the money you can, find the best house you can get, uh, go buy a new automobile? What, what would you say if you, if you knew you had three minutes? And that, that puts, you know, per, you talk about perspective. Well, he knows he's close to death. I mean, and his, uh, his son, uh, Joseph, knows that. And so when he, when he says it here in the Scripture, by faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of the staff. Uh, I, I was reading after one of, one of our uh, commentaries, Matthew Henry, and he, he uh, said there's about four things that come out of this passage of Scripture. And this, is, this passage of Scripture we'll look at for just a minute. It's over in uh, Genesis 48. Genesis chapter 48, verse number 1. But it says that he made both of them heads of different tribes. And whenever he talked about Ephraim and, uh, and Manasseh, he looked at them and he told their daddy, your kids are not your kids no more. They are mine. I'm taking them like, I'm taking them like Reuben and Simon. 
Simeon. Them boys, they're going to have their own tribes. That, that, was, that was an incredible prophecy uh, to take those boys because he felt like that Joseph had been jousted, and he had. He had been sold by his own brothers. But Daddy, on his deathbed, we're, we're going to take some leverage out of this deal. And so those two boys, when they're brought to, to Jacob, or to Israel by Joseph, and they're just little fellers, and he's, he's manipulating them, getting them up there in front of him, because he's blind now, he can't see himself, and he, he's, he's, he's going to do some work himself on them. But uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll give you these four things to see if you can pick them out uh, as we go down through these scriptures. The first one that he did, according to Matthew Henry, was he made them both heads of different tribes. That's Manasseh and Ephraim. And if you read after Israel, who does it always talk about? Manasseh and Ephraim's in there all the way, just like his own children, like his own, like, like Israel or Jacob's own sons. He prayed that both might be blessed. He didn't just pray for one of them, he prayed that both of them would have the blessing of the Lord on them. He prophesied that they both should be uh, blessed, that, that they would have tribes that would follow them. And he worshiped, praising God for what he had done. Remember how he did? He's, he's dying. He mustered enough strength to set up in the bed, but whenever it come, after he got through blessing him, he gets up. I mean, he's wobbly. He's way up in years, and he, he knows he's just a, a little bit from dying. He gets up on that staff and praises the Lord. Whew. So he, he's honoring God with all the strength he's got left. He's pouring out. And so the, the writer said this is why even though he had some really steps of faith, like when he met God, what about the ladder? He leaves home. He's by himself. He gets a rock there at Bethel. Lays his head down on a rock. And who can tell me the story? What, which young person? Thomas, you remember what happened when he was sleeping? Daniel? B? Baby girl? JC, you remember what happened when he went to sleep there on that rock? Okay, that's okay. I, I, I mean, I'm just pulling you right off the top. Baby, do you know what happened at the rock? Levi? No, sir. You know what happened at the rock? Any, any of our young people know what happened at the rock when he laid down and went to sleep? Okay. Yeah. A ladder came down from heaven, and on the ladder was what? Going up and down the ladder, ascending and descending, was angels. And at the top of the ladder was God talking to him. And he made a covenant with him there. And you remember whenever he woke up, he looked around and said, Woo! I'm at the gateway. I'm, I'm right in the front of the house of God. Woo! Man, I mean, the hair standing up on him all over. He got him some water and poured out on that rock and started paying tithes. <laughs> Listen, that, that, is a, that is a true sense of God touching you. If it don't touch your wallet, you've got nothing. Help me. He said, Lord, if you bless me. He didn't have nothing then, but he said, if you bless me and I get to go and come back, I'm, I'm going to give a tenth. This is a long time before tithes was set up in the Levitical priesthood. The Levitical priesthood was still in his loins. He had never even married. I come back here to this rock. You, you bring me back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay a tenth of everything I come back with. He had a bunch when he come back. I mean, his, his uh, coffers were full. But he, that vow, but what a, what a precious time. And he had some wiggle times down the next 20 years. But boy, from Penuel on... You see him. He stood up. He's a, he's a new creature, what, like what God's called us to be. That's not on the record here in Hebrews, but this him at this point of dying, uh, that he, he rises up and makes these promises. We'll look at just a few of these scriptures here uh, in, in chapter 48 and verse number 1. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and set up, set up on the bed. So he gets up and, and set up on the side of the bed so he can be as good as he can to help them babies. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. 
and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. So he's hanging on to what God promised him. I'm going to give you this land, the land that was given to Abraham, the land that was given to Isaac. He said, I've, that land's been given to me, and now I'm passing this on down. Look at verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, are... Isn't that powerful? Those kids are my kids. I, I love it. <clears throat> they're mine as Reuben and Simeon. They're just like, they're just like them. They're, they belong to me. They shall be mine. So twice, here he's claiming them and saying they're, they're going to, and that's how come that the children of Joseph are noted all down through. Every time they deal with the children of Israel, guess who's there? Manasseh and Ephraim. Yeah. Half tribe Manasseh stays with Reuben and Gad, and the other half stays with the Benjamites. Anyway. It's a powerful word. Okay, on down to six. And thy issue which thou begettest after them. Now the kids you have from now on, they'll be yours. But these two are mine. Come on now. <laughs> I, I got to tell this story. I mean, y'all probably don't understand it. But anyway, whenever... Uh, when Justin, Justin and, and the baby stayed with us for six years after Jessica died. And so we kind of got hooked to the children. And so whenever Justin was going to marry, I said, that's wonderful. That's great. I said, it is one deal. These three kids here are our kids. So when you leave, you go have your children. <laughs> <laughs> and of course he laughed he laughed me off <laughs> but that's that's the way we felt them kids are our kids <laughs> we still feel that we love them babies <laughs> yeah shoo shoo go on have your own children <laughs> these are my kids <laughs> anyway it's a precious thing that, that Jacob he'd been around them enough he knows he knows them babies now they were alive whenever he came there and uh, whenever he come into Egypt and so he's got to see them some not, not regular I'm sure because Joseph was busy but they're down there now they know, they know Joseph knows my dad's getting close to eternity there's a promise that was made him his granddad his great granddad we're interested in that we believe that this, this we're going to inherit our seeds going to inherit that Canaan land we're still believing God so you can see faith raising up off this old grandpa verse number 7 and as far as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrathah. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? He wants to make sure because he's blind, he can't see them. And Joseph said unto him, his father, they are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. Now he just said these sons are mine, but he wants to make sure. He's fixing to bless them, so he's going to do like uh, I Isaac. I want to know which one of these are. <laughs> and Joseph said to his father, They are my sons whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. So he could tell one was older than the other one just by their height, their body structure, their size. They said that blind people with their hands can, can tell, they, they start seeing through what they feel. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has shewed me also thy seed. He said, I didn't think I'd ever get to see you again, Joseph, but now I'm getting to see your children. Man, I mean, he's, this is a blessed time for Jacob or Israel. Uh, verse number 12, And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left. The right hand would be the main blessing. And so he's saving that blessing for the oldest one. Which one's the oldest? Manasseh. He, so he's got, he's got Ephraim over here in his right hand, Manasseh over here, and he's switching them as they go across. Yeah. So Manasseh's going to end up, well, no, they're, going, they're going to go straight forward, wouldn't they? If he's in the left hand, it would go to the right hand of his dad. So that, that, would, be, that would be right. 
So he's just sending them straight forward, but the dad, the dad switches it up. Okay, let me, let me see if that'd be right. Yeah, if I if I had Ephraim in my left hand and I sent him forward, he would be in the right hand mm -hmm. of Jacob and Man, and Manasseh. Would be in the left. In the left, but he had he had he had Ephraim in his right hand and Manasseh in his left. That's what the scripture says. Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, Ephraim in his right hand. Would you say it with me? Ephraim in, Ephraim in his right hand and Manasseh in his left. left hand. And so he's guiding them right to the way he wants them blessed. And Grandpa goes. <laughs> 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 okay, now look what it said. <laughs> and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. Now, right right here is Ephraim, and the right hand goes where? The right hand is at, whoa! <laughs> yeah. And his left hand's up on Manasseh's head, guiding his hand. Look at the word here. Guiltfully. Wittingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. <laughs> And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow. And here's the prophecy. Here's the prophecy he talked about where? Let them grow where? Into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So he not only blessed them, but he prophesied that they would become a great tribe of people. And I mean, Ephraim and Manasseh is talked about all through from that time forward. Uh, they're, they're tribes in, in the in the Israeli group. I thought that I thought that was some interesting facts. We'll look at some scriptures here along we're getting well, you need to read where his daddy says, wait a minute, Dad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand, let's do it again where you can see which one it is. <laughs> okay, put it right here. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim. It displeased him. Oh. And he held up his father's hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. <laughs> and Joseph said unto him, Father, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. No. And his father no. refused. No. And said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And so that's the way it went down on the promise. And then he stands up, look at the next verse. And he blessed them that day, saying, It in thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And then the close of that, uh, he, he, uh, stand, he uh, stands up and blesses them, uh, leaning upon his staff, precious. One, one scripture I'll leave with you in, just before we run out of time here. In Acts chapter 27, verse number 25, and this is like that power of predestination that God knows the end from the beginning. Here is the boat that Paul is on with the, I, th I think there was 165, I'd have to read it again to remember, but there was a lot of people on the boat, and when they had lost all hope, something happened. Paul meets with an angel there on the boat, the winds of your rock Ladon are just as rank as they've ever been. Nothing has changed except God said something. And this scripture says, Wherefore, sirs, 
Be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. And what the angel had told him, that every person on that vessel, the vessel was going to be lost, but every person would be saved. And it shows... It shows the power of God to do the impossible. We know that, but those stories bring out the fact that there's nothing beyond the God that we're serving. Even when it gets right down to the wire, like, I mean, that's an incredible story about Isaac blessing the wrong one. But he, when it gets through, he says, but the question was good. But he's going to be blessed because he recognized his faith said, you know what? It's got to be God's way. And so he, gave, he turned it loose. He gave it up. That, that was his faith shown there in Hebrews. Okay, let's stand together. If you have any re requests this evening.